He's cut content. This is part two of the most recent episode. Amelia's unknowable present. And Echidna's tears explained. This part is the most confusing thing to me because when she was crying, it did not look like the tears of someone that's a hater, but tears of regret, sorrow. It was very confusing. Let's see it. Yesterday, we talked about the conflict in the mansion. But now it's time to switch gears to Amelia's unknowable present. Okay. While there weren't any extensive scenes excluded from the anime, there were a lot of subtle details you may have missed that helped to make the emotional climax that much more effective. Especially when it comes to the buildup that went into leading Amelia towards the answer of the trial. So I highly recommend watching to the end so you can see exactly how everything pieces together. Let's begin. But first. Episode 47 Part no 2. Happiness reflected upon the water's surface. Covering chapter 2 of volume 15 of the light novel. With Fortuna's gentle voice being the first thing she heard, Amelia immediately found herself to be overwhelmed by a storm of emotions. She couldn't understand exactly why she was so moved by her mother's presence, but just the sight of her eyes was enough to bewilder her to the point of speechlessness. Because this trial is Amelia back... It's like the present, but not really complete the present. Older Amelia, but still kind of baby Amelia, still in the forest. And this is the current Amelia phasing through this body, but it's like, she's like not completely aware to trial, right? And it's like, Fortuna, huh? What's going on? As Fortuna continued to brush her hair, she decided to tease Amelia in return for her comment about the dress, mainly pointing out how tired she looked. You see, even after being sent to the watering hole to clean herself up, Fortuna couldn't help but notice just how drowsy she still was. It was almost as if she was still half asleep or something. Because it's a trial. So, Fortuna was teasing her for being so cumbersome. Now, after Amelia's hair was finished, the anime made it seem like she wasn't able to see her reflection. Yeah, the reflection but in the mirror. But that's not exactly what had happened. While she was intent on seeing how she looked, Amelia found herself unable to commit to it. No matter what she did, she couldn't get her legs to move towards the mirror. It's like a symbolic thing of not being showing herself in the mirror, but also it's like because of the prejudice and the discrimination of her like half-felt features, she never wanted to look at it. But then the happiness reflected in the water surface is supposed to be like Amelia accepting herself and now she's moved forward. This wasn't because she couldn't see herself though. It was more so because she didn't want to. There was this inexplicable feeling preventing her from moving any closer. So, as she stood just out of range of the mirror's reflection, that's when Juice arrived to save her from her predicament. Juicy. It was almost instantly that he too commented on Amelia's peculiar behavior. You see, he had asked Amelia to treat him kindly today, a statement that implied that something was happening. Since Amelia had no idea what it was, it was only natural that she ask about it. But this was what went to make Juice so confused, because the one who had asked to go to the lake in the first place was none other than Amelia herself. Yeah, but like, this Amelia is different from that Amelia, you know, because it's trial Amelia, and this is like, it's weird how like, you know, in this trial, it, it, this world exists in their own timeline, but we're just in self-inserted, kind of like unaware of like what the hell's happening. Although she couldn't remember, Amelia did feel like this was a request that she'd made once upon a time ago. So she was happy to be able to finally follow through with it. Once they had arrived at the lake, Amelia had put on yet another display of rather odd behavior. She was almost instantly captivated by the beauty of the scenery around her, making her- This place is really beautiful though. It is somewhere in Elior Forest. I don't know if this little structure matters, but this is, it's a cool spot. Maybe once we thaw the forest and melt the elves and shit, maybe we can hang out here again. ...unable to move as she tried to bask in all its splendor. With this being the second time she had dazed off into an expression of bewilderment, Fortuna had to ask her again if she was feeling okay. It was a question that ended up being answered by the grumbling of her stomach, leading the three of them to sit down and eat like how we saw in the anime. Now, the reason for Amelia's tears was because the only thing she wanted was for Juice and Fortuna to be happy. Aww, also, what's Archie doing over here? She wanted nothing more than for both of them to be able to be happy together. So, for the two of them to be exchanging laughs like how they were doing right here, well, that was the greatest joy that Amelia could have ever hoped for. But I thought those tears weren't complete tears of happiness, but more of, this isn't real, and it's, it's kind of sad that, it's, you know, it's like, she's like becoming aware that this is a trial, and like, what she's seeing is a literally unthinkable present, where, you know, supposed mom and dad are happy and smiling, and it's just like, too cruel that this never happened due to Pandora. Or hoped for. Moving on to the scene with Archie, he also made sure to comment on the odd nature of Amelia's behavior, 
just like everyone else had noticed. There was something about both her voice and face that made her seem different. <laughs> Not this Amelia, though. This is a crazy mind break. Yandere Amelia. I wonder if this side will ever come out. Because, like, yes, it happened that one run because she continuously spammed the trial because Subaru quote unquote left her, right? And she went crazy. But, like, this proved that, like, Amelia can't turn like this. Maybe not anymore with the new developments, but like, I wonder in the future if this Amelia is able to return again. It's, it's fucking crazy, and it's gonna be a ruined run, but just for the sake of content, I would love to see it again. She seemed to be a lot more grounded in comparison to how she usually was. Since Fortuna wasn't here this time to excuse it as her sleepiness, Amelia instead teased Archie for being so mean, causing him to panic and apologize numerous times over. It was after this that she then changed the topic to that of Juice and Fortuna. When Archie made the comment of how their relationship only needed time, it was the very fact that there wasn't any that caused her to start to break down. Wah, wah. You see, Amelia knew that it was only a matter of time before Juice and Fortuna would have ended up together. Whether it took months or years, she knew the day was sure to come when the relationship was going to blossom. Not if Pandora has anything to do with it. So this was a sight that she wanted to see more than anything. But as much as she yearned to celebrate the happiness of this couple with the entire forest, this world she was dreaming of simply didn't exist. The day she desired the most was one that was never coming. Unthinkable present. As much as she would have loved to live the rest of her life in this perfect fantasy, the fact that she couldn't forget the fate of the two most important people to her was the very reason behind why she couldn't. This was a stance that Amelia seemed very- Did anything happen with Fortuna's corpse after this? Because, like, obviously, everything got frozen by Amelia here. But her body, if it's frozen like that, and then Puck, you know, found her again, I wonder what happened to Fortuna's body. Maybe by then it just didn't exist anymore, but why wouldn't it? It was frozen. You know? I wonder if it's still around. The very reason behind why she couldn't. This was a stance that Amelia seemed very intent on maintaining. But Archie's next words made it so much more difficult to do so. I mean, it would have been much easier for Amelia to handle them if he just reproached her for being careless and ungrateful. But the way he spoke as if out of sympathy instead of anger was what made them that much harder to stomach. Reason being that it was clear that he just wanted her to be happy. Amelia could tell that all he wanted was for her to be at peace. Goat so Archie. for her to willingly choose a path that was sure to be filled with numerous burdens and hardships. Well, that was more than enough to cause Archie a little bit of heartache. It was a gentle feeling of compassionate sorrow that echoed through every one of his words. When Archie went on to question her choice of a future where getting hurt was a certainty, Amelia's initial response was that she didn't want to be hurt. She explained how she was going out there to search for a future where she wouldn't have to be hurt. A future where running and hiding wasn't something the she'd nuts. have to do anymore. The nuts merchant. When given a response like this, it was only natural for Archie to follow up by asking about the wounds deeply engraved into her heart. Surely that future she was in search of wouldn't be able to bring back anything she'd lost already. So Archie wanted to know if she would still go out and look for it. This was the question that led her to declare how she wanted to be strong like everyone else. It was because she wanted to save others just like how she'd been saved by them that she was able to choose the world on the outside. Yeah, and this is going to be huge because up until this point, everyone has like sacrificed for Amelia, seemingly, from her perspective. But now she wants to do more for others. And the people within the sanctuary, the demi-humans and the peoples of Arlan Village, all non-believers turning into faithful, loyal, almost fucking cult members. Just, they're, not sh they're not just like shouting Lisa Nargaib or EMT just yet, but this is going to be huge. And she's going to deliver them in paradise. She's going to be literally doing what she's saying that she's going to do. Now. When Echidna came around at the end of the trial, Amelia instantly regretted turning around to look at her. The feelings <laughs> Amelia regretted that came when she saw this witch's face on the brink of tears were ones that she never wanted at all. These tears again! These are not the tears of a hater. It looks like she's pained by this. Is it the tears of regret? It's a very confusing face. So, Amelia immediately wished to have never looked in the first place. As for Echidna, we don't know exactly why she decided to react the way she did. But the novel does state how her mere presence was there only to instill bitterness. 
So perhaps Echidna was feeling a bit envious of Amelia's ability to be content with a less than ideal world. Hmm. Echidna is just bitter that Amelia is like thriving? That is the perspective of a hater. Maybe it is just that simple. I'm not sure. Again, like a show like ReZero, there's definitely deeper things going on than Echidna just, just hating on Amelia. And, and I, I don't know. It, it, it was a very pained look of regret and sorrow. Maybe it spans back with who Amelia's real mom is and how Amelia is now. And she talks about a lot of regrets that she had in the past. It's, it's very interesting. Or maybe her inability to understand Amelia's decisions and feelings were causing a bit of inner turmoil. Whatever it was. Like, does Echidna feel guilty? Like, she fucking hates Amelia. But that oath with Puck was made, which is very interesting how it kind of protects over Amelia. She hates, like, Amelia's mom, apparently, right? She hates Satala. She hates Amelia. Why, though? I don't really know beyond just like the Witch of Envy just fucked shit up in the past, right? I don't, I don't really know the fine details. Something tells me that she might be regretting or is like pain to see this though, which is not just from pure hatred, but is this like self-reflection? Echidna realizes that like, I, I, or, or maybe, maybe it's a different perspective of like, Maybe we should think that Echidna actually lo loves Amelia <laughs> and all the hate is just a facade? No, I can't be. I don't know. The, is Echidna not supposed to feel emotions? I don't really know how that shit works either because, you know, there was a, a, a very important part during the Witch's Tea Party where it's revealed that Echidna was faking all those affectionate moments with Subaru, right? All those memeable slice of life moments that we thought were just funny, cute moments of Echidna getting gushed. It was just an act. She was just acting like a human to get closer to Subaru. So why would a person like that cry like this? Are these tears fake? <laughs> is, is, is Echidna doing her best to put on a fake face of tears? Because she's like, oh, this is a part where it's supposed to be like emotional. I'm going to cry. But like she doesn't know how to cry, so it looked like this. We just cooked up a theory that makes no fucking sense, but if you kind of think about her pattern of behavior and what she has presented, like... <laughs> what, this is a botched crying face? That's why it's hard for us to believe that, like, what kind of crying face is this? Nah, it can't be. I don't believe that. I just... There's some deeper lore reasons as to why a kid is crying here, but I have no clue. Amelia couldn't be bothered to figure it out right now. What she needed to do was determine how she was going to end the trial. I think at the end of the day, these tears, it has to do with something about a kill, a, a, like, um, so, like uh, Amelia's mom, right? It has to do with Amelia's mom and Amelia, the current state of Amelia, and, 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 and simply having Amelia, like, overcome. Like, like what? Are you going to tell me that Kidna is crying for Amelia right now? That, like, she's like, oh, man, look at this unthinkable present with Juice and Fortuna back together. I was, like, Echidna was the biggest shipper and wanted Amelia's happiness. I don't think so, right? That makes no sense if we're supposed to believe that she hates her. Amelia couldn't be bothered to figure it out right now. What she needed to do was determine how she was going to end the trial. As she looked over the cliff and down to the water below, the sight of her reflection was what allowed her to understand the answer she needed to come to. There was an interesting comment about how I don't really look like Fortuna. I don't know if that's important or not. She began to think about the differences and similarities between this world and the one she belonged to eventually leading her to the conclusion that there was a single element that was both different and the same. An element she could only identify as herself. I mean, the way everyone had been pointing out how she was acting so differently made it that much more apparent. So, by realizing that she was the component that didn't belong in either world, she understood that in order to complete the trial, she needed to accept herself. Only after acknowledging and understanding who she was in the world she was in would the second trial come to its end. Since that's what she needed to do, Amelia decided to force herself into a situation she'd been avoiding for the past century. Look at your reflection. You see, ever since she'd awoken from her slumber, not once had she ever looked at her reflection. She was always too scared and afraid to see what she looked like. I mean, she looked here though in Frozen Bond. What do you mean? She saw herself, right? <laughs> Doesn't that count? <laughs> like, having awoken in a body that was completely unfamiliar to her. 
Amelia's immature heart just wouldn't allow her to. It was a feeling of fear that only stacked every time the villagers turned themselves away yeah. from her, and though she didn't know before. She eventually came to understand that her features bore similarity to the Witch of Envy. So, it was the distress that came with knowing she was similar to such an evil creature that made her not ever want to look at herself. Yeah, and that's why it was so important in episode 1 of I'm Satala, and Puck is like, ooh, really you going with that one? And Subaru is like, wow, what an amazing name. Wow, half-elf, amazing. Glaze, glaze, and that like, again, that first run, I think, was like the best run in terms of like, like if you approach this like a fucking <laughs> a dating sim game, like the affections, like that first iteration, just like affirming her of all her insecurities, like that's gone though. Not only would she avoid any of the mirrors that she'd come across, but she'd also trained herself to avoid her reflection in the water. That <laughs> she trained herself, okay? So even though she sees it, she's trained herself to what? Her reflection in the water. One more time. Avoid any of the mirrors that she'd come across, but okay. she'd also trained herself to avoid her reflection in the water. Yeah, she trained herself, guys. She's avoiding right now. That's why she couldn't move any closer to the mirror in the room. She still wasn't at the point where she accepted herself enough to look at her reflection. While the anime does try to convey this with a series of flashbacks, it's something you wouldn't have picked up unless you were looking for it. I mean, it has been a part of Amelia that's been in front of our face the entire time. Like, one of the smaller clues was from the fact that Puck was always in charge of her appearance. It was one of the ways he'd been protecting her fragile heart from the wounds of her past. Given that this was the part of her that needed to change, Amelia made sure to open her eyes the moment she was about to hit the water. That way she'd finally have to face the reflection she'd always been hiding from. She said, huh, I don't really look like Fortuna. And I wonder if that's like a, any sort of important line. Maybe it, maybe it doesn't matter. The moment she was about to hit the water. That way she'd finally have to face the reflection she'd always been hiding from. While she was a bit upset that she didn't look as much like Fortuna as she expected, nothing was going to hinder the feelings of happiness that came from this world of her dreams. So, Amelia was able to end the trial understanding exactly who she was in the world she was in, leaving only one trial left for her to do. Alright. Anyway. That what the title says, Echidna's Tears Explained. <laughs> you know? Echidna's Tears Explained. Did, did, did we get the tears explained, guys? Because that's what I was confused about the fucking most in the last episode, and I think it's deliberate that... No one fucking knows, right? It's a clickbait title. It is what it is, I guess, right? And I still don't really know why Echidna, the biggest hater of Amelia, right? She fucking hates EMT, but she was crying. She was, she was crying so hard. And at the current moment, aside from what I've said already, I have no clue. Echidna is a very confusing person. And I feel like it's um, obviously intentional that Tape has created this like position. Where the fuck is she crying? Come on. Where the fuck is she crying? I feel like it is very intentional that, like, this face of tear is questionable, right? There's a deeper reason that can only be learned if we know more about who Amelia's mom really is and what Amelia's purpose is and why Echidna continues to just hate but seemingly does shit to kind of, like, support Amelia out of guilt, regrets. I don't know, Echidna mentions that she regrets a lot of things, but without those fine print details, I don't know. But I feel like, again, this just stems back to that. And this stuff, I think this is one of the most like beautiful ways to wrap up Amelia's uh, trauma and the problems she has, right? Not being able to see a reflection, she never wants to admit it, right? That she looks like a fucking half-elf, all her personal not the personalities, but like the outward physical traits. She's been just like admonished by everybody, kids, random fucking boomers, you know, fucking Mikletov, the, uh, the Sage Council, they all hate her, but... Now she can look at it and she can move forward and like diving in, looking at a reflection and even it's called, the title's literally called like what? Happiness reflected on the water surface. It's just like beautiful poetry, but that's it from me. I just wish I fucking knew what a kidness tear really meant, but I don't think we're supposed to know that just yet. That's spoiler content. Please go give Mr. Andy News a like on the channel. Sub to it if you haven't and I'll see you next time.